I stabbed the kid in the eye with a colored pencil. You're lying. I swear to you. My mom can tell you right now. You I can, stabbed? I can call her and she'll tell you the entire story. So, Were you always um, like this in school? I'll just be honest. I was a very good boy. Like, I didn't get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> Yes, you were. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a very good boy. I was a very good boy. Neither are. What are the traits that you have that you do not want your child to have? Is there anything that you regret doing in the past? Uh, you ready? Uh, are you no. sat down? Do you oh, feel good? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah? All right. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> and welcome back to another episode of the why not podcast it's your boy carl and it's your boy james and we are excited to bring you another episode of, of this the why not podcast we didn't stop i'm sorry no wait no i'm not sorry <laughs> <laughs> i say whatever i want yeah no, this is a free country how's your day um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, why? <laughs> why? Uh, 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 let's skip that. Let's not worry about how my day was. Um, let's worry about my day. How about uh, let's let's talk about um, <laughs> let's talk about butter sausage. <laughs> let's talk about butter sausage. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, this is a very rough start to the podcast for this episode. Were you always um, like this in school? Oh uh, man, I like. Yes and no. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I feel like when I was in elementary school, I was kind of a little goofball. Uh, I think I kind of mellowed out, chilled out in high school. Who is this? It's um, <laughs> falling down my neck. Um, but no, actually, um, that's actually a good question. In high school, I was always that guy who was always um, that guy. I was that guy. <laughs> no, no, but really, um, I was um, I was the dancer in high school. You know, and my yeah. school isn't like. The school will say you guys had in Virginia Beach and in like Norfolk and all that stuff. I never stuff. went to school in Virginia Beach. <sighs> Actually, that's true. But for your school, did you have like a dance program? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I, see, dance team. Yeah. I didn't have a dance team or a dance really? program. Dancing was almost like forbidden in my school, bro. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I'm serious. Like the only dancing that I ever like did that was a part of school was I was a part of a step team. You were a part of a step, like stop the yard type stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I guess if anything, that was like my first actual like dance. I was stepping. Um, but anyways, uh, I was that kid who danced a lot in school. Mm. Um, I ended up, you know, break dancing in high school, yeah. and um, <sighs> I could talk about all that. Do I want to talk about all that? Dude, it's like we're here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I was in school, I wasn't. I wouldn't necessarily say I was popular. I was known. People knew me. But I don't think all because you're known you're popular. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. I would say my brothers definitely had a lot more like popularity than me. Like yeah. older brother Gabe, he was a boss. Sister Stephanie, you know everyone loved her. Michael, you know super good, like really talented in uh, football. My little brother John, you know he was a prom king, like you know. Damn. And then it was me, like just the one who just like left the football team to break dance in the hallway like <laughs> yeah you were a part of the football team mm -hmm. oh yeah i used to play football in high school oh i didn't know that i wasn't that good that's actually something you never told me what did you play i played a i was a corner oh you were a corner oh yeah i was cornerback what do corners do again um so cornerbacks they kind of just like they defend or i guess they're kind of cover the wide receiver mm, okay, you know okay, so okay. that was kind of my thing dang you i can see that I can definitely see you being a football player. Uh, I wasn't good at it, so. <laughs> Shut up. I'm. I told you I'm trying to stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, today uh, we have a couple people uh, in the office today. Uh, it's not just me and Mr. Tito. We also have. Uh, uh, my roommate, uh, another best friend of mine, um, Mr. Machos, a.k.a. Steve Camacho, but we call him Mr. Machos. Cause Follow Mr. Machos. Machos on YouTube and Instagram. Yes. They have a really funny gaming channel. Yes. I mean, I mean really funny is 
It's a stretch. <laughs> it's it very, funny. it's very stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's funny though. It's funny. Yeah, I think. Okay. It is. Do you think it's funny, Mr. Machos? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you and go. You know, of course, my fiance is with me. And yes. Where I go. Um, but to go back to what you were saying about you know how was me in school. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Let me take it back even further. Oh. Yeah. Let me take it back to elementary school, James, where Steve was. So Steve was actually there with me. Um, oh, for real? Yeah. Me and Steve have known each other for a very long time. Oh wow. Um, in elementary school, I was. Uh, I'll just be honest. I was a very good boy. Like I didn't get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Hey, yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a very good boy. I was a very good boy. You're the <laughs> I love you, daddy. <laughs> I'm a good boy. No, but really, you know, I, I, was a, I was a really good boy. You know, I tried my best. You know, I pay attention. I listen to the rules. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just say the trick. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I was, I was, I was a good kid. There we go. Better. I was a good kid. Can I say good child? <laughs> kid, good. All right. All right. Child. I was a very good kid when I was in school. Okay. Uh, I didn't do a lot of crazy stuff, but then again, I feel like the only times when I did do things that were like kind of off the top and crazy, it's either when I was with my boy Steve, yeah, yeah, or my other boy Ty. Did a lot of stupid stuff growing up, um, but I think uh, in elementary school i was uh i was a good boy but i think i had a lot of energy still like okay i i tried my best to pay attention in school and uh of course listen to my parents listen to my teachers but i also really enjoyed goofing around um in elementary school is actually where i started to get into drawing you know yeah when i was in elementary school i used to draw these comics and the comics, it was me. Yeah, it was, uh, I would always draw these comics, and these are the three characters or four characters that I would have. The comic would have Sonic the Hedgehog, Kirby, and Pikachu. And they were roommates who like lived together, and they went on adventures. And then they had a companion that was a dragonfly. But the dragonfly had the ability to like grow really big and turn into like a dragon that they could ride. You know how psychotic you sound right now? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about this as a 28-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> no. The amount of um, fentanyl and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of fentanyl! <laughs> hey, yo! <laughs> my parents were pharmacists. <laughs> hey. my, parents, my parents were pharmacists, yeah. What? Had a lot of drugs in the, in the home. Had a, <laughs> had a lot of drugs <laughs> in home. But no, no, no. In all seriousness, yeah, my parents were pharmacists, but, you know, they worked very hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, they didn't do anything illegal, <laughs> just you know, for the record. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, when I was in elementary school, I really got into drawing. And I think that's when, like, my creativity really sparked. Um, I started to, you know, get into, you know, watching people who inspired me to do what I do today. Like, for example, you know, like Ryan Higa, Niga Higa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dietrich, Kev yeah. Jumba, you know. I got into uh, no, watching. No, he's finished last. That I I would sing that song with you, <laughs> but I just know that if we start singing, we're, it, we're not gonna, gonna finish it. <laughs> um, so um, I got into uh, you know watching these YouTubers. Yeah. And uh, there was something about it that just made me feel like that's the life that I wanted. Yeah. Like I want to create. I want to make skits. Yeah. I want to just do funny things and do stupid things with my friends. Yeah. I felt and that. um. That also led to, you know, me wanting to get into dancing, too, because, you know, that's when I was introduced to, like, Dietrich, and then yeah, Dietrich yeah. was associated with Quest Crew, yeah, that yeah. was associated with ABDC. Was Quest Crew, like, your first team that you really watched? Um, yes. Because everyone says, like, you know, who was your first, like, dance team you watched? It was, like, Jabberwockies, and that was mine, because mm-hmm. that's what I saw, but then it's, like, everyone sees dance at, like, a different time, so, like... Was yours Quest Crew? Yeah, it was Quest Crew. Um, mm. After Quest Crew, that got into like Brian Puspos, Ian Eastwood. No, true. Keone, Mari. Puspos. Yeah. Puspos. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, in middle school, honestly, I don't really remember middle school. Middle school really? was only like two years. I remember <clears throat> two years. doing, yeah. 
Oh, that's weird. Is it weird? Our middle school went two years. I did middle school for three, three, three years. It was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Maybe we were the weird ones. Dude, I don't know how they used to name schools back then, but it was just like there was elementary school, middle school, high school. That was for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's only three. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I said. Three. Oh, I thought you said a lot. No. I said we didn't have a lot. Oh. Because, you know, those there's like those other people that have schools like junior high or like secondary. Like we didn't mm. I didn't have that. Well, I was a 1999 kid, so like all we had was elementary, middle school, high school. Yeah. Not none, 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 none of the secondary or junior high stuff. Not at all. That is true. I and mean, there are a lot of schools that are like they have like specific subjects. I remember that there are some schools in like the seven by seven that are like that. Yeah. Where I heard that, oh, like we we have this academy, we have that academy. That doesn't make any oh, sense okay. to me because we didn't have academies. You know? Yeah. Um. Anyways, what am I trying to say? You I don't know. Middle school. I don't. Yeah, I don't really remember middle school. It was only two years. All I remember was like just doing stupid stuff. Like I remember when it was me, Steve. Do you remember Oscar? Uh, I remember we would just do stupid things. I remember me, Steve, my boy Oscar, we were coming, we were leaving the after school bus, walking back home, and Oscar said that he had to go use the bathroom. So we were like, okay. So me and Steve kept walking, and then all of a sudden, you know, we see Oscar like sprinting at us, like running. We're like, yo, what's going on? And we noticed that there's like a car following him. And um, we all started running because we didn't understand what was going on, but we knew that we were in danger. Yeah. So eventually we got away um, and we asked him, like, yo, what happened? And he was like, yo, man, I had to take a piss. So pretty much he pissed on this guy's porch. <laughs> and I just, I'm glad that you're here because I want to make sure that I didn't just make this up. Did that actually happen? So he throws up the door, pulls out his pants and starts pissing. The dude opens the door and it. Yeah. His little, his little junk. <laughs> he's a good, he's a good little boy. Okay. Re. And then it's us watching him get chased out, and the guy comes back after us and started questioning us as kids. Yeah. And he followed us to your house. Yes. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I'm glad. I, I th- for a second I thought that I, I made that up. Yeah. But I was like, no, I'm sure that that happened. So yeah. it, yes, it happened. And then I remember, um, <laughs> I remember the guy talking to my dad. And I don't know. Ooh, he's in trouble. I actually don't remember getting into a lot of trouble, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So maybe I wasn't such Y'all a Y'all are boy. messed up. <laughs> we, don't, we don't claim that, man. You know, but yeah, I mean, enough about me. Like, how about you, bro? Like, how is... Because you're not even... You're from Guam. Yeah. And yeah. Then I remember you talking about you being from florida too yeah, like yeah i was i moved around a lot but then every time i explain that to people they think that i'm like some military brat when i'm not it's mm-hmm. just that my family's like they just love to go all over the place so i actually went to through yeah okay one two three four jeez five. really i've been to six different elementary schools i just realized that i've been to a lot wait hold on you went to six. That means every year you were in a new no, elementary no, no, no. school. Yeah, bro. basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> but no, I remember going to two different schools even in the same year. Like, cause I grew up, I grew up on Guam. I was born on Guam, and then my first ever like elementary school was Wadham Guerrero Elementary School, and that's where I went to for a few years until there was going to be a new school that was being opened up next to my house, which was a closer, it was going to be like its own new district. I was going to be able to go to this school. They just built it and it was called league one elementary. So I went there to finish my other years. And then next, you know, I'm being told by my mom that we're going to move. Mm. So then we end up moving and I move up to California. Yeah. Because that's where my dad's mom lived was in California. I don't remember. See, my my Cal- dad's mom or my dad's mom and my dad's sister lived in California. Mm-hmm. And I went to an elementary school called Topeka Drive. And <clears throat> this is a funny thing, okay? This is what I remember. <laughs> I think to- Topeka Drive, like the school that I went to, I think that's like the first time I remember cussing at someone. And I felt so bad for it. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't know if it was real or not. But I can always like remember where it was at. Because mm. I remember we were in a playground. And it was me and this friend. I, I was like that kid that was really trying to like fit in. 
So it's like I really wanted a friend, and I would like do what they would do. Okay. You know, I didn't really know like what what I was gonna do because I was like the short, I was like the short uh, Filipino kid that yeah. like no, and when I was with a room full of white people, like I didn't know where I was at. Gotta join the crowd. Yeah, man. bro. Gotta so I'm trying in. to find myself yeah. in the crowd. There's barely any Asians <laughs> in the group, so it was like you know I showed up in my polo one day, and I was just like, hey guys, well, how are you doing? <laughs> lovely weather. <laughs> <laughs> lovely <Wow>. weather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stocks are high these days, oh, aren't geez, they? Man. Dividends. <laughs> but yeah, no, bro. <laughs> Dividends. Yeah, but no, I think it was a member. Um, there was like this girl, and I, I genuinely had a crush on this girl. Mm-hmm. But what ended up happening was we were on the playground, and I think she was like trying to, it was, she was, it was her and her friend, and then they were trying to call us out. And then for some reason, I had the, like, I had the, what is it? <laughs> I had the audacity. Okay. <laughs> While he, w- my friend was roasting her, I just cussed at her, and then I made her cry. And they ran to the teacher, and we ran away. Like, and I always remember that, but I don't know if it was real or not, though. Hmm. Like, that's the one thing. Like, but I always like I remember it happening vividly in my head. But yeah, that's that's some weird story that I remember from like middle school going to California. I didn't really like it in, in California, but. After California, I moved with my with my uncle on my mom's side, and I've been to two different elementary schools in Florida. There was one; it was Holmes Elementary, and the second one was Cine Kites. And it was just, bro, I had to. It, it it was really difficult for me at elementary school. I feel like it had had a big deal with my identity, with mm-hmm. like trying to. I felt like I always had to fit in somewhere. Like mm-hmm. I, I was always trying to find like a. Here's the thing. It's like you and Steve, right? So it's like you know you grew, you basically grew up with the guy. Yeah. I've never had that. I've always had to jump from best friend to best friend to best friend because it's either we haven't talked in a while or I left. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that like sucks in a way to where it's like I always feel like I have to find a friend. Okay. You know, so it kind of sucked whenever like I would get really close with this one friend, but I was like, oh, sorry, we're leaving California. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Okay. And then I went to this one school. In Florida, it's like, oh, cool! I made a new best friend. Oh yeah, you're switching schools. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, what? When am I ever gonna like stop moving? You know what I mean? And it made it sucked for me to try to find friends. So I, I, I was in Florida and I stayed there for nine to ten years of my life. Okay. I, I only stayed. Luckily enough for me, the only school that I ever stayed in was middle school. Okay. And that was Ferry Pass, uh, Ferry Pass Middle School, in Pensacola, Florida. And I feel like middle school is when I started getting involved a little more trying to be more social with people and i knew that i was going to stay in that school so it was like i made friends yeah it led up to high school but that's when i i was a band kid back in middle school what instrument did you play i, was, I played an alto sax that was my okay. first instrument it was funny because i told me and my friend kind of like made this pact to where we were going to both play drums together and we were going to play percussion but they said that i don't know why i couldn't go but they just ended I ended up playing alto saxophone instead and I ended up being pretty good at it so I I was there and I feel like middle school was just such a reckless time because it was like that's when I really got introduced to girls like Ooh. middle school was like cuties I, <laughs> gotta be careful more like cuties <laughs> Yo, oh, I, I, <laughs> Bro, it's the food. <laughs> Listen, I meant cooties. I said cuties. <laughs> no, but like, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's like I got introduced to like a lot of girls back in like middle school. And yeah. then when you're in Florida, bro, it's Florida. <laughs> like, <laughs> Florida, I man. I don't have to explain Florida. Like yeah. Florida is just like hood rat. So it's like I was introduced to like a whole lot of people. So anyway. <laughs> <We're Florida. laughs> hood rat is, yo, Florida is crazy, dude. I miss it, man. <laughs> I miss being in Florida. They're so out of pocket over there, but I love them. But anyway, it was like I was that's when I got introduced to girls. And then that's whenever I like I think I had my first girlfriend in middle school. Mm, yeah. And we ended up dating like all the way on and off into high school. And it just like it was just not the good relationship. Bro. It was so toxic. I mean, it was the first one. So <laughs> it was, bro. Like it was like the first girlfriend. And then, you know, but in between, there was like so many in-betweens there, though. You know what I mean? But other than that, middle school was just like reckless for me. That's when I started feeling like, okay, I have a great set of friends, Mm -hmm. which is cool. So what ended up happening was I played band and it wasn't until I got to high school was whenever I 
participated in marching band for the, you know, marching band, and I did soccer. Okay. I also did, <clears throat> also did football and lacrosse. Oh, you play football too? Yeah. Bruh. I was a running back. Why, really? Yeah. Well, how, how come we're both finding out that we played sports? I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know you played sports. Dang. I just knew that you danced. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I did more than that. Uh, well, yeah, I too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I was a running back. So I was small. Yeah. But then I get hurt really easily. Dang, you were a running back. Yes, dude. I always thought that running backs were really cool, man, because, like, you were fast. No, I was fast. Yeah, yeah because I fast. used to be a lot skinnier. Yeah. You know, and I was able to, like, like, my coach used to call me, like, the Filipino Flash. Like, that's what he used to call me. Because we played flag football during PE. What? And then I'd just be, like, I w- they would never touch my flag at all. Because I would always, like, run out, make an outside curve. Or, like, they would hit a split between the, the offensive and the defensive line. And I'd run straight through. Nobody could touch me, dude. The Filipino flash. Bro, that's when I used to be fast. Dang. That's when I used to be fast. You but, yeah, no, that's... That's when I started getting... Flash. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> like, he's ha- Filipino. Flash had to be white. The yeah. flash had to be white. Yeah. But, yeah, um, that's when I really started getting involved with extracurricular activities in school. Those are my favorite. Yeah, yeah, so it was just like... I just... And then that's when I kind of started to notice that I wasn't really good at school. Because that's whenever all I cared about was, like, friends, activities outside of school. I was only caring about... You know, just seeing people. I wasn't caring about academics at all. Yeah. And it followed me into, you know, like, I was only in high school in Florida for sophomore year. Or for freshman and sophomore year, but I didn't even finish my sophomore year in Pensacola. That's whenever me, uh, my mom, my little brother, and myself moved over to back to Guam. So we went back to Guam, and then I went to John F. Kennedy High School. And... um there is when I really started dancing like because I used to freestyle back in like middle school high school like I said in the first episode where I was like I was just freestyling you Mm -hmm. know what I mean but then this is where I finally started getting like choreography based and then I joined a team at a high school dance team uh called Uprising and then that's whenever I started you know dancing more I played soccer I you know I I wasn't playing band anymore because they didn't really have a solid band program there Mm -hmm. so it was either like I continue to do band or I just keep going and I just keep going with dance. Okay. Dance ended up, ended up actually being really good for me. There was a lot of people that were like rooting for me and stuff like that. So it was really, um, that's why I understood what you said where it was like people knew you, but they didn't know you. And I've had conversations with um, Jasper on this all the time. And I call it, um, you were that nobody somebody. That's I how like I that. describe it. And it's like, because people knew who I was. Mm -hmm. They knew me. I was like, oh yeah, that's the guy who's like the captain of the dance team. He he does this, he does that. But they don't know me. Yeah. Like I never had a conversation with these people. They were just like, oh yeah, I know you. I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. (laughs) So yeah, I was a nobody somebody in high school. Like I was, I'm not saying that I was popular, but people knew of me. Mm -hmm. You know, and then um, I just remember growing up that I was always like, uh, I was always just like a troubled kid. Like I knew uh, there's a <laughs> there's a Filipino term of this called makulet. Makulet. Yeah, makulet, and it's like you're just makulet. Babe, how would you how would you describe that? Makulet. <laughs> a troubled kid, basically. It was just you're just super like like a troublemaker. Okay. Yeah. Troublemaker. That's what it is. So I remember. So I don't know if I've ever told you the story, and I don't know if I ever told you the story. So Ooh. what happened was. Uh, everybody remembers like referrals, right? Yeah, yeah. So my first referral was actually in kindergarten. Why? What did you do? I stabbed the kid in the eye with a colored pencil. You're lying. I swear to you. My mom can tell you right now. You I can, stabbed? I can call her and she'll tell you the entire story. I <laughs> no, right? I was a kid. Bro, you should be in prison. <laughs> No, but I don't think it was like I don't think it was right at his eye. I think it was like I stabbed him like on the side right here. Okay, so you didn't hit his actual eyeball. No, 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 oh no, no. Gosh. Because dude, that that would have been worse. Ah, I don't say no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two referrals. You're going to baby jail. <laughs> no, but uh, what is it? No. So what happened was right. <laughs> I remember what happened. It was like I, my mom got me these colored pencils. They're yeah. mine. I was <laughs> they're mine. They're mine. They're mine. Okay. Okay. Anyway. All right. All right. So yeah, they were you. mine and then I put them on the desk so that mm-hmm. I can use them. Yeah. And then the kid says, Oh, this is mine. 
You didn't want to share. No. Like, my mom bought me these, and you're telling people that these are yours. So you wouldn't give it back. So me, I grew up very tempered, right? I'm a, I'm a temperamental person, dude. Like, <laughs> you know this. I know, yeah. <laughs> so it's like I grabbed a color pencil, and I went, bop. Like that. He fell to the ground crying, bro. Uh, yeah. My mom got called to the school. It was like, yeah, your son um, kind of just stabbed another kid in the eye with a pencil. My mom, yo, I got the <laughs> ass whooping of my life. Bro, my mom whooped the crap out of me, man. Like, it was tough. Good job. <laughs> you did the right thing. I wasn't, I wasn't like, but yeah, that's that was a really funny story. Like, I just got. I got my first referral in kindergarten. And usually people get their referrals in like what, middle school, high school. My first one was in kindergarten. That's when my mom knew for a fact that I was going to grow up. Like I was going to be a complete mess. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, I would always get into, what is it? I would get into like fights in like high school and like uh, middle school. It's just, I don't know why, bro. It was just, I was, but that's the thing that I was learning though. I was basically just wanting to do everything that the other kids were doing because my mom and dad never really like, I kind of had to like force myself and like, kind of like step out of their, um, <clears throat> step out of the boundary of like, I want to do this. I want to do that. But you know, the Asian parents like, no, you can't go. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do that. And I, that never sat right with me. I've always wanted to just do whatever I wanted. So I was just like, I'm going to sneak out. Yeah, I'm going to get mm -hmm. into fights. And I'm just going to do what every other one of my friends is doing. I don't care. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it was, Um, I feel like with that, it caused like a lot of tension between like my parents and me with school. And um, it was just even getting to the point where it's like if I wasn't doing good in school, my mom was going to kick me out of dance. Okay. And I feel like that's when I started doing really good. So makes sense. You you know do what you got to do. Or yeah, yeah, take away yeah. Your video so game. it's like she was when really close to like thing. pulling me out of like high school, uh, like pulling me out of high school dance. Mm -hmm. And then that's whenever I started taking school seriously. But I realized that I was actually really like I was actually really into it, and I was smart for that last year. But like the following, like what is it? The three years before that, I was just my grades weren't grades just were not it that's when i realized like i was never the school kid i feel that you know what i mean i was always just like a. I was always just like a. you were an extracurricular kid yeah i was like i love doing yeah. activities me too you know yeah i, mean? I guess we were yeah. kind of like yeah, yeah. i just I was, like school i wasn't really that <laughs> student i was a c student I'm not, not gonna lie. be wrong don't get me wrong i'm like i'm st i would still go to school mm -hmm. you know i would definitely continue to want to learn but then i just knew from like growing up i was never really into it because i didn't see any type of like I didn't see any type of like use in it okay. I didn't feel like I needed to hold up like a responsibility to go to school but now I know that it does matter so I would want to well how would you feel if like you had a son okay and yeah he he hated school he hated school but he loved <laughs> playing you know soccer he loved doing a lot of extracurricular activities like I want to know how you would respond to his behavior knowing that like he was kind of like you yeah well like when you were younger if i were to see it within that situation right and knowing what i've learned like i wouldn't want them to make the same mistake that i did because you can still be really good at something like outside of school and be good at school mm -hmm. so it's like the thing people have to realize is that like he can basically do whatever he wants like after after high school mm. after you graduate but if you're still under the age of like 18 and like you're still at the age of elementary school middle school high school you have no choice <laughs> you okay. are not dropping out of school you are getting your high school diploma like that is what you're working towards you know what i mean so i have a question for you okay. what's up okay. you want kids of course okay i cool. do want kids awesome um i want to know is there what are the traits that you have that you do not want your child to have? Traits that I have that I don't want my kid to have? Yeah. What do you not want passed down? Oh, <laughs> uh, It's going to be a long episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's my temper. Okay. I definitely do not want my 
kids to have my temper and that comes along with um my patience too my impatience Mm -hmm. um growing up like i'm not going to use the excuse of like my parents like being temperamental is the reason why i'm temperamental i could definitely could have controlled it man it's still a struggle Mm -hmm. till this day but i wouldn't i wouldn't want my kids to have a temper you know what i mean because it's like at the end of the day um it's not going to benefit anyone especially you know if they decide to whenever they grow up and they have their own they have their own wife and they have their own kids like it's something that you really have to learn to do is like controlling your temper knowing what to do is right mm-hmm. and just learning how to be patient with people because i know i was never growing up to be patient like it was just a like i feel like my parents were very naggy parents Mm. So no disrespect to my mom, by the way. I love you, mom. You know what I mean? But this is just how at things grown up. You know what I mean? So like whenever we were younger, it was like if we didn't get what we wanted, it was just going to be it was just going to be a crap show. Like stuff was just going to be yelled out through the house or like we were going to get really upset and we were going to cry. Ding. But it's like now that I'm realizing it, it's like, of course, you're not going to get what you want because you're not working for it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I hope my I hope my child doesn't have my temper and my impatience. But that's something that they're gonna learn from Jasper, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh There you go. What is it? Uh, I feel like is it just like traits like you know, mental traits or is it just like physical traits? I mean, do you wanna go physical with this? We can go physical. <laughs> sure. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Steve. <laughs> Sure. Let's, We're gonna uh, bleep that. Let's, let's, let's go physical. <laughs> let's go physical too. Okay. Let's yeah. Go too. Yeah. Why not, man? It's well, a why not I'm podcast. Short, bro. Like, I don't want my kids to be short. I want them to have the wife's genes, because her family's tall. Yeah. And I'm short. I don't want my kid to be short, bro. I get that. That's one thing. Uh, my nose. What's wrong with your nose? It's just a big nose. I have a big nose. You have a big nose? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do want my kids to have my lips though. I feel like that's one pretty nice <laughs> lips. Why are you looking? I mean, it looks like a, <laughs> it <looks like> a, <laughs> it's a fine looking nose to me. I don't see an issue with it. No, but um, uh, what is it? I feel like that's the only thing that I would I wouldn't want my kids to have is just my temper. Okay. Like I feel like everything else is pretty all right. Um, oh, uh, one thing for sure I wouldn't want them to inherit is like I want them to know when to like chill. Okay. You know what I mean? Because, like, I feel like with me, sometimes I'm kind of, like, uncontrollable. And I like to just do things out of, like, spite. <laughs> but there's a moment where you need to learn to, like, relax. Yeah. Take a chill pill. Because. <sighs> Bless you. Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's like, oh, my goodness. Hold on. <sighs> Bless you. <sighs> okay, get your together. I don't ever remember that. <laughs> if you guys don't know, I will say bless you two times. If you sneeze a third time, you got to get it together. <laughs> you got to be, you can't be sneezing three times. But yeah, no, I feel like there's like, there's moments where you have to be serious. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want my kids to like not know when to take things seriously. Mm-hmm. Me, it's very hard for me to take things seriously sometimes because I usually like make a joke or like, or like make, like bring up a situation that's not even supposed to be brought up. So it's like, Learning to know when to, like, chill out is something that's really important that I feel like they need to learn how to do. What about you? Uh, man, I mean, honestly, I feel like um, something that I've noticed is with me, I sometimes I have selective hearing. Actually, no, wait. Me too. Yeah, yeah, I have selective hearing. Facts. So you can tell me something and I will listen to you. But sometimes it just doesn't register. register. <laughs> and it's just, and like a g- really good example of that is 90 times, 90% of the time when I meet someone new. Hi, yeah. my name is Peter. Hi, Peter. My name is James. Already forgot your name. It's gone. I don't remember <laughs> your name. I, it's just, it never downloaded. I missed that update. Like it's just, it's gone. And Bro, I wish, <laughs> um, I guess what I'm saying is that like my memory is very selective, you know, my same, same with my hearing. I feel like yeah, yeah. I forget a lot of things and I don't, I don't know why I don't really think that I have a, like a memory issue. Yeah, yeah. I just think that 
maybe the things that are important to me, I just find, of course, easier to remember. That makes sense. But yeah. <sighs> some, there's some things that are not important, but I should just know. And I just like, I just can't remember. And I, I feel like that's that, one of the reasons why <laughs> I was never a studious kid. Yeah. Because for me, remembering simple things was so bad. Like I, I'm pretty good with pictures, yeah. you know? Um, so when I had to do things like math, like, I don't, I don't know. How do you, how do you draw out all these, I don't what know. What do you like, mean these numbers mean letters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these letters mean numbers. Yeah. It just, it didn't make any sense to me, you know? So I would say if I had a kid, I really hope that, you know, their memory is just better than mine. Cause I have to write everything down, everything, yeah. down, everything down. Um, besides that. Honestly, I just thought like a bug hit the window. It was kind of gross. <laughs> um, it was it was on the outside. Um, I know that we're talking about physical too. Um, I'm a little bit on the short side too. Yeah. But honestly, if I have a son and he's short, then you're then you're a short bro. I think it's a very ideal height to be like five. You said you were five seven, right? Yeah. I think five seven is a very ideal height for a man, like five seven or five eight. Yeah, I guess that's what I bad. wish I was. I wish I was five seven five eight. I mean, the thing about it is like. If you're under six feet, you're like technically short. <laughs> like Honestly, I mean, like in, in today's the, standards. Yeah, in today's standards, yeah. If He's you're under, six foot. yeah. If there's a five anywhere, <laughs> if there's a five before anything, then you're short. Yeah. Um. But honestly, I remember I I kind of had a little bit of trouble with being five seven when I was like younger because I was like, oh man, I wish I was taller. You know, my little brother is taller than me. He's like six feet something. Dang, dude. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's taller than me. Um, so I kind of felt a little insecure about my height at one point. Um, but eventually I was like, you know what? I'm kind of like, you know, I'm a little on the short end. I'm a little compressed. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm a little com- I'm a I'm a little stumpy boy. All right. Yeah, I'm a very compact man. No, I remember know? when I, but, I um, used to when I used to party, and like, it was like it was at the point to where it's like everyone would be really into like all the tall friends in my group yeah but i would still kill it because i'm the only one that knew how to actually dance so it was like short kings baby we yeah, doing great hey, we, we, we making it out here <laughs> short man kings, we, we out doing here it. making Killed it out it. also as dancers i don't know i think we kind of got an edge bro we're closer to the ground oh yeah we are yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and i feel like we're just we can move more better than yeah. everybody else no shame to like tall dancers because as, as a tall dancer that's it must hard, it must be hard yeah it must be like a lot I harder do it. because you gotta like just imagine the fact you had to like extend somewhere it yeah. takes you longer to extend there because of your you know what i mean you know who's a really tall dancer that can dance really good you know david messiahs from grv i don't know i gotta show you a video of him bro he's going crazy yes show me the video yeah we'll show I appreciate you the video, it. Video, <laughs> yeah. um okay well how about this all right so we talked about the negative things that we wouldn't want our kids to have yeah uh, i'm trying to think of if there's anything else that i wouldn't want my kid to have um, I do know that sometimes I can be stubborn. Yeah. But oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can be pretty hard headed because you know that's just I think I got that from my mom because my mom's the most stubborn person that I know. But um, I think that that's kind of a double edged sword. Like it can be a bad thing, but it can also be a pretty good thing, especially if you have like you know strong morals. If you're stubborn towards your you know, beliefs yeah, yeah. and morals. I think that that's actually a really good thing. Like holding your ground. Yeah, exactly. Type, yeah, yeah. Um, now, like nowadays, I'm definitely a lot more, um, what's the word? Not open. Yeah, open-minded. I'm a lot more open-minded nowadays. Yeah. But I still think that I can be very stubborn. Um, but besides the negative things, how about the positive thing? Like, what do you want your kid to have that you have? Because I know you got some amazing traits, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, uh, so you, you, know, you got I don't know. You got man. that. You got the nice nose. <laughs> Shut know, up, bro. Suc- succulent <laughs> lips. Mm-hmm. I'm out going. I'm not smart, you got but a I'm nice, out going. <laughs> nice set of hair on that head. No, I feel like with me, I definitely want my kids to have my energy. Mm. Like I definitely want them to have my energy. Like no matter where I'm at, in the store, at a funeral, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> wait, hey, wait, no, no, wait. No, 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 no. I'm hey, I'm yo. Praise <laughs> <laughs> <Hey, stop. laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> <Come on. laughs> Oh, no. No, 
but I definitely I want them to have my energy, bro. Like because I felt like no matter what, when I was growing up as a kid, and then even all the way up until where I'm at right now, mm -hmm. it's like I always have. I can always find energy somewhere. And I just hope that they're just as extravagant and extroverted as me. Like, mm -hmm. always wanting to, like, hey, how you doing today? Da, 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 da. Because it's just, like, I don't know. I feel like it's a really good way to, like, connect with people. So, I feel like that's something that I really hope that they have. Um, I really hope that they can dance. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> I feel like for you, that's like a prerequisite. Like, bro, it has to. You, be, dog. you need to know. You have to have at least rhythm. Bro, Jasper and I have already talked that if like if we ever had like a daughter mm. or like a kid, just a kid, like we're gonna put them into like these salsa classes, and then they're gonna be wearing like the, the little sparkly, the little sparkly uniforms. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. little girls, they just have the little sparkly shoes. Like kids, yeah, like this. it's so cute, bro. Like we watch videos all the time, and then the the guy has like a little suit. Right, but he's over here touching so like he's like forty. <laughs> I you know, don't with know. the hands and stuff, bro. It's like they just look so adorable, yeah, man. While yeah, yeah. At least yeah. while they're little. <laughs> but it yeah, changes no. when they're about 13, 14, bro. I really I really hope that my kids can golf. Mm -hmm. I will teach them how to golf. Yeah, you can teach well what if they what if they don't want to learn though? <laughs> yeah. Huh? What if your kid doesn't want to learn and how to dance or want. golf? And whatever he wants to do, I feel like that's whenever it's going to come down to the point to where it's like, I'm going to have to understand and see what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you really put your mind to it, then go run your money up, bro. True. Like, I understand. It's like, I'm not going to let you <laughs> get your money up, bro. You got to push that man's, bro. I but it. I feel I like it's it. just, I wouldn't want to hinder my own kid from something that he's super passionate about because... I feel like, especially in this age, bro, uh, and then as we're going, it's like, I feel like a lot more opportunities are going to come. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's only a matter of time. So for me, being very, like, I felt like I was restricted from the things I really wanted to do that I couldn't do. Um, I wouldn't want to put that on my kid at all. So, but it's like, it has to be a reasonable thing, though. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. But other than that, it's like whatever you feel like you're passionate about and you feel like you you show me proof that you're going to work hard for this, then go for it. Okay. Like that's that's the kind of parent that I was going to be. I respect that. But yeah. What about you? <sighs> bro, well, I don't know. <laughs> do, I have any, do I have any good traits? <laughs> yeah, bro. I can um, name a lot. I would say um, for my kid... I just really hope that my kid is like, I hope that he cares. I hope that he just cares, you know, because the thing about it is like, there are a lot of people who don't care yeah, yeah. about anyone but themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that you always have, to, I mean, I, I want him to, you know, care, but also not care to the point where he's not caring about himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that that's something that I struggle with myself. Mm -hmm. Um. I definitely want him to be able to sit down and listen to someone, like be there for someone, be empathetic, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, especially like, you know, like in these days, there's there's so many issues, you know, everyone yeah. has some sort of, you know, symptom of something, whether it's like anxiety, depression, there's trauma literally everywhere. And yeah. like, I'm sure he's going to have his own form of trauma. I mean, we all will like, create the character. Yeah. But, um, just the ability to sit down and be like, hey, you know, like, I understand you're going through something. Like, mm -hmm. let me, like, what can I do for you? Like, how can, how can I help you? And it doesn't even have to be like a friend. It could be like someone that you know of or something like that. I feel like I'm, that's something that I really do want to pass down. Like, I really care about how people are doing, yeah. you know? Um, I have this question for you. So, like, where, where do you think your foundation comes from, from like, caring so much about people or like wanting to constantly help people out like where do you think that that came from for you that absolutely without a doubt came from my mom um, yeah my mom's very weird my mom is the nicest person that i know except to her children because she beat us to a pulp me specifically she beat me so many times for so many reasons <laughs> that were not correct to beat a child but she yeah. did but literally anyone else you know, she will feed you. She will take care of you. Yeah, she yeah. will bring you gifts. Like she, I remember we would always, uh, like 
she's low-key a hoarder but she's a hoarder for a purpose she hoards things she keeps things in our garage so then she can fill up a truck full of gifts and things and give them all away to the villagers in nigeria wow dude Mm -hmm. actually the, the only times when i went to nigeria was so then me and my family can just give well, that's good. Like, I, like a little missions trip. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty dope, man. You know, um, I just I just feel like my mom has been a lot of like a mom to a lot of people. Yeah. And she definitely taught me that you know you should give, you know, yeah. giving is so important. You know, helping people and it's really funny because my mom's name is my mom's name is Blessing. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's dope. And I think that's such a fire name for someone like that because she really, truly is such a blessing. That's dope. Man. And she definitely does, you know, I think she inspires me to be that giving person, that person who's going to be there and help, you know. At least yeah. the only thing about her that I would say, um, I don't want to go too deep into it, maybe like for another episode. Yeah, yeah. But the relationship that I have with my mom, it's like, yes, she was there for me. And she was very caring. But. To other people, like to me, it wasn't. Ugh, it's gonna sound weird. It wasn't very motherly. It was yeah, more yeah. godly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, which I still respect. I honestly, I'm still very glad that I had that because a lot of people don't get that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and also, you know, reading the Bible, praying, you know, going to church. I went to church five times a week. You know, like I feel like they, that's my life now, bro. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, it's, <laughs> but it's it's such a great thing. Yeah, bro. no, it's yeah. it's chill. No, it's it's good. Uh, when, I, when I was a kid, because my parents, my dad was Catholic and my mom was, you know, Protestant, you know, we had to go to two different churches all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, I really, they really instilled, you know, Jesus and God into my life. And yeah. I feel like through, you know, you know, through that, I think that that has really helped me with understanding like, oh, we should be kind to each other, you know, kind to our neighbors, kind to our enemies. You know, we should be there for each other. And um, it's like a lot of the life lessons that I learned were through church and through you know that so wow. definitely my mom overall just god that's great yeah i'll say my dad too because my dad taught me some <laughs> also my oh, dad yeah. too i got you ig that's really good to hear bro like yeah. honestly that's really inspiring because it's like because what is it i feel like with me if, if we're like on the subject of moms right now where it's like i the the way growing up with my mom it's just I feel like there was just a lot of like immorality just growing up. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I feel like the kid acts upon what he sees a lot. Of course. Right. So it's like, as a kid, I see a lot of these actions being done and I'm just like, dude, like, okay, well, this is how life is. And this is how people are supposed to act, I guess. Yeah. So I acted out the way that I am. And I would, then there's like, there's so many things wrong with it. <laughs> So the thing is with my mom, it was like, because I got into, I got into <clears throat> believing in God and my, and a Christianity, like before she could. Mm-hmm. And it was just a fact that like, I would constantly like pray for her. And like, even, even though she was always like within a really tough spot, like she was just like, it was very irresponsible decisions. And like, like I said, like, I'm not saying this out of like, no, like no respect for her. I'm just saying, because this is like a testimony, you know what I mean? Because she, she came from just a really bad spot, like a couple of years. Like it was a long time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until literally like two months ago was whenever like my mom, cause whenever I was telling, whenever my mom would call me, she would just be like, Hey, um, I'm really going through it right now. But then now the answer for my stuff like that now is like, Hey mom, just pray. Like that's all you got to do is just pray, dude. It's like, it's really rough right now. But then if you just trust in him and just pray about it, you are going to feel so much better and you know that you're going to be guided in the direction that God needs you to be. Amen. So it's like literally every time I talk to her, I'm always constantly praying for her. And then just a few min- just a few months ago, she finally came out. She was like, Carl, you'll never believe it. I was like, what? She was like, you know, um, I, <clears throat> I was going through like a really rough spot. And then there was that one day that you told me to just pray. So, you know, what? I said, okay, I listened to you. I went to church. And she prayed. And when she prayed about it, she just felt like this presence just go over her. And then she just cried, really wow. cried like a lot. And she was just like, I wanted to do good now because my mom wasn't working for So my mom had another kid. Okay. And my mom stopped working. So she had no income. Basically, my grandma died. My grandpa died. Everyone's basically like gone from the house and she doesn't have the income 
rolling in to help pay for the house. Mm. So then she just thinks that it was just all hell broke loose on her, you know? And then I was just like, mom, at that point, turn to God. And she did. So when she prayed, that happened to her. The presence took over her. And then now she's coming up to me like, oh my gosh, Carl, I feel so much better because it's like, I trust in God. I am a... I have this new job interview and that even though it's going to take a year, like a few months until they open up, I still want to work. I want to be able to just like my main focus right now is just to provide for your brothers and for you and to help you out with whatever financial problem you have. Like this is, I feel like this is what God's trying to tell me to do. And it's like, I was like, dude, that's tight, bro. <laughs> you don't understand the amount of like tears that came out of my like eyes, like listening to her say that yeah. because it's like praying works, dude. You know what I mean? And it's like people really don't think like, I don't know what it is, but oh, the camera. But um, what I'm trying to say is that like these prayers work. You know what I mean? And whenever my I prayed upon my mom and she told me that I was like, oh, God was actually listening. Like that is so great to hear. So it's like I, my, I feel like my mom is just starting down this path of wanting to be led by Christ and also to know like what her priorities are with her kids and ever since then bro we've been calling each other every day we've been i've been checking up on her more and then even though things are still really hard i still pray with her and then she just feels so much better you know knowing that she has her supportive kids and that she has a loving god and it's just i feel like within that point it's just like the moms really did something for us even though, like, even though it was a really rough patch to, like, understand them. But then when you finally, like, grow up, it's like you realize, like, hey, yeah, you really were going through it. And then I don't want to waste time. Like, I just want to make sure you know that I love you. And mm-hmm. you taught me a lot. You know what I mean? Gee, that's crazy, man. Dude, I'm, I know, man. I'm happy for you, bro. Thank you. There was a video I saw on TikTok. And it was, like, what was the, um, there was, like, five questions to ask your mom. Like, what was it? Like, five questions to ask your mom before, like, you know, she passes away. And it was like, so, like, what do you think is your happiest memory of us? Like, what is, like, this? And I feel like it was something that I should definitely ask my mom. It's like, what's your happiest (laughs) memory of us? Um, What's something that I did that made you feel unappreciated? What's something that I did that made you feel appreciated? Mm -hmm. Um, What's something that you want to stick with me even after you pass away? Like, you know, stuff. That's some deep questions to ask, bro. I don't. I would. I wouldn't want to ask that. (laughs) No, that's 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 too deep for me. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I I can't think about that kind of stuff. But then it's like I don't want anything to go on. Like I don't want anything to just pass by. Yeah. I want to know what my mom has to say to me. Like. God, Cause like we're not getting any younger, dude. Yeah. You know, and it, and that really sucks. But the thing is, is like it's just a part of the growth, and then it's just within God's plan. It's part you know of the journey. I mean? Yeah. But I'm just glad my mom started now. You know what I mean, so we have some great testimonies about our moms, man. This is just a that's the third topic. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's a mom episode. <laughs> we love you, moms. Yes, all the mothers and fathers out there, because yes, there are bro. fathers out there trying really hard too. Yeah, you guys are heavily appreciated. Don't yeah. think that you're not. Absolutely. If it wasn't for you guys, we would not be here. But yeah, no, man. Literally, bro. it wouldn't have been biologically possible for us to be <laughs> here without you. So, thank you. What were we talking about? Uh, I remember we were talking about our kids and what we wanted to pass oh, down. Oh yeah, we were talking about our kids. I forgot what we were supposed to talk about after this. We had something else we were going to talk about. It was about like something about being in the present. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, because I asked you this question a few weeks ago. Okay. And it was like. Are you the type of person to like live in the present or like plan for the future? So mm-hmm. I want to ask you, I wanted to ask you that because I didn't know what your insight was on that. Like, do you love living in the now or do you like, do you want to set stuff up for like the coming years? Oh, man, it, I honestly feel like I want to say that I live in the now. And I, I do to some extent, but I definitely do think that I do plan for the future a lot. Yeah. Because uh, when I think about it, you know, the things that I do today. I'm like, man, I feel like I'm doing these things so then in the future I can have this, you know? Yeah. I'm working really hard with Easy Media so then in the future I'll be financially free and I won't have to work for anyone. You know, I'm yeah. working really hard now with dieting and working out so then in the future I'll be strong. I'll have, you know, the body that I want. It's just like, yeah. so I do think about the future a lot, but at the same time, I'm still enjoying the present, you know? Like, I feel yeah. like I've told you this a lot and other people too, but you know enjoy the journey 
Yeah. You know, um, everything that we're doing is, yeah, everything that we're doing is in the present, but I still think that it's very important for you to build towards your future, you know? Mm. Um, Because if we just live in the present and we only live in the present and we don't think about the future, then you're not really thinking about... I feel like you're not really... This is going to sound weird, but I could be wrong. But that's just not the kind of way that I would want to live. Like, if I think, oh, I'm going to do this today, uh, today because I feel like doing this today, it may not be a good thing. Yeah, It may just be something that you want to do based off of, of an impulse mm-hmm. without you thinking about the consequences of your actions. Because mm-hmm. you're not thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow or a year down the road when, you know, it bites you in the butt. Yeah. Because of the stupid decision that you made in the present because that's what you wanted to do at that moment. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, I definitely do live in the present, but I definitely do keep the future in mind a lot because in the future, I mean, I'm very happy now, Yeah. but I also want to make sure that I am happy in the future. So, yeah, yeah, it's really important. I feel like when it comes to me, there's like a really, you just have to find that fine line. You know what I mean? It's like, like I said, we're not getting any younger. Absolutely not. So you wouldn't want to miss anything within what you're doing right now. But then if you want to grow something that is going to last forever, like you're basically your legacy, Mm -hmm. like you would want to plan for that thoroughly. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why it, it was super unfortunate that within, I feel like I've had my time living in the moment. And it's weird because it's like, I know that I'm only 23, but I've had a lot of experiences like within my young age, like as a 15, 16 year old Mm -hmm. where I've lived in the moment a lot. Like I was doing things that 15, 16 year olds shouldn't be doing. Like they should just only be worrying about school. And I was worrying about like performances and clubs and, and you know, just stupid stuff that a high schooler shouldn't have to get themselves into. But I've had my fair share of living in the moment you know and i feel like this is why i i give a lot of praise to my fiance because it was like if it wasn't for her i wouldn't even do any type of like future planning at all like i wouldn't really be thinking about the future ones for her because she she lays down foundation like she knows like i'm gonna do this so that this can happen i'm gonna do this so that this can happen like it's always something that's gonna have to deal or be of a good benefit for what's going to happen within like the next few years, within the next few decade. Like she plans that, you know what I mean? So I feel like there's like a good counterbalance to it. So it's like, but man, if I could just, and now I feel like I'm at a time where I have to think of the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was like, I set nothing up for myself as a young kid. Like I was just, Get all my main goal was to just get out of high school, like that's literally what I thought the end of the road was. Like, as soon as high school is done, then that's when you live as a miserable adult. That was my image of everything. Wow, but then it's like now that you are, I did become an adult, like as a 23 year old, I'm like, there's so much I can do. You can do anything, yeah, but I didn't make the right decisions to get me there. So now I'm not saying that I'm stuck planning for the future but it's just the right thing to do Mm -hmm. because it's like if you're not thinking about your future at all and you're not trying to set anything up for yourself and you're just living by the flow which is good but that's only for certain moments but when it comes to like important things like your family your health your 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 faith your kids most especially you know what i mean and then going so forth and so forth into like retirement and then what if your kids want to go to school you know what i mean everything it's like that thing that i said it's like i really want to give up but somebody's childhood is in my hands yeah you know what i mean it's all i really feel like that's our main like purpose in life is to like constantly pass down that love and pass down that knowledge that you decided to keep And it's like, within all of that, you can't get really far if you don't plan for your future. Like, it's just not going to happen. 
you have to invest in yourself yeah you really do have to invest in yourself and you have to realize that it's not about it's not just about you that's something that that's something that jasper really taught me too it wasn't it's not just about you mm-hmm. it's not just about that your own life like you have to think of the people who are constantly rooting for you who are there for you and who would really be upset if something happened to you you know what i mean like doing it for them and also doing it for your future family because me right now i'm i'm at a point to where it's like i'm at a point of like panic but it's like a good panic because given i'm really excited to start a family i'm really excited to have my own kids my own house but at the same time it's like i'm always just like okay but what do i gotta do to get there mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's why i'm trying to take these little steps now to where it's like what can i do to be a better husband what can i do to be like what can i start planning now to and then learn so that whenever i do have kids they can learn that too and that'll be great you know so it's like you really have to think about not just yourself and yeah i mean that's that that went pretty deep but (laughs) it's just it's not about you that's why god put so many people on this earth was for you to be like there is something to care about there is something to love there is something to look forward to and you can continue to grow that if you care about it and if you want to build something on that you know what i mean so it's just you have to find a fine line but then again with the living in the moment like some days it's not that bad to do that no absolutely like for example it's like i get told a lot to put my phone down which I should. We were just, <laughs> we just talking just about talking this about in the last that. episode. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I get told a lot to put my phone down. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if something passes as much, you really have to think about it. It's never going to happen again. Like, there was probably this one moment that you were really looking at. Yeah. And somebody else saw it. Right? So, for example, I've thought about this while I was driving this one time. Jasper and I were... Um, what is it? I forgot. I think it was Jasper. Jasper was driving, or oh no no, her parents were driving, and then we were in the back seat, and I was on my phone, and we were driving over to Blacksburg, going towards Virginia Tech, and I was on my phone, and then what is it? There was probably like a really pretty view, and then Jasper told me to like, babe, look, look up, and then I was too late, and then it was just like this block view from these trees, but I felt so like. Those little things like hurt, hurt, hurt me a little bit because it's like, I think of like the simplest little thing is this really big thing. So it's like, I was only thinking in my head, like I can only imagine how beautiful that view must have been in her eyes, but I decided to not look up and like not live in the present. Like I was just doing something that didn't even matter. And then you miss little moments like that. Mm hmm. And then when you get older, like you're probably going to regret not being able to have that little moment again. So taking in as much as you can within the present is very important, dude. Especially with the people that you love around you. Do you want to know what I really enjoy? What? So I love, I love filming my experiences. I mean, yeah. you, you know that. A lot of people know that. Yeah, yeah. Like whenever I eat with hanging out with friends, I enjoy filming like a yeah, moment like, like a little snippet your you know? seattle series yeah exactly yeah, you yeah. know but here's how i think about it like for example i'm going to a mythical concert today yeah um of course i'm going to be in the moment of that concert but i will take out my phone to film for myself in the future yeah, yeah. to see the past yeah i don't know i just think that's really cool like I think there's a way for you to like admire all moments of, you know, the present, the future and the past. And I don't really think that there is anything wrong with living in any of them, even in the past. Like I get that some people live in the past sometimes and living in the past and only in the past. That's bad. Living in the present, only in the present. That's bad. Same with the future. We have to learn to coexist with all of them, because if we don't sometimes look back at the past, then how do you ever, how do you ever actually learn a lesson if yeah. you don't look back at what you did or look yeah. back at you know what happened in history that's why history yeah. is so important present 
that's your actions and what you're doing right now yeah. based off of what you've learned in the past and that is going to dictate your future, future. Yep. so i don't think that there is a right way but i just feel like you should my opinion you should learn how to live in all three yeah I felt that there was this thing that I saw online and it was like, um, uh, there's two days in an entire lifetime that you can't change. And it's yesterday and tomorrow. <laughs> wow. I heard that. I was like, dang, but yeah. you can't change about what you're doing right now. You know what yeah. I mean? And then it can affect like what you do within the future. But I really felt that though. I feel like, there's something about filming stuff that really makes you want to like continue to remember. Right. Like, like, you know, like the video I just showed you of like, what is it? Jasper walking the dog. Yeah. Like, I just like, it's a cute little thing that I want to remember. You know what I mean? And then I also like the crucial, the crucial vlog. Mm -hmm. Like the crucial vlog is so funny. And it is something that I always want to look back on because it was just such a cool experience to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what it is. It just, it, when you look at stuff like that, I feel like, too, it's like a motivator because it's like, I remember, <laughs> I remember this thing that I filmed like way back then in 20, I think it was like 2019, yeah. 2020. And it was just me saying all of this nonsense. It was like, it was like me saying like how sad I was and how done I am. And how I'm never going to make it. And I'm never going to like be happy. I'm never going to be this. I'm never going to be that. And I'm feeling so much FOMO. I feel like my real friends are back home. And I feel like I don't really have anything. And I watched it like a few days ago. And I was like, I'm so funny. Because I look at where I'm at right now. That guy who felt like he wasn't going to get any type of love. Has all the love he, in, in the world that he needs. He has all the friends that he needs. He's happy. He's doing the things that he wants to do. He's going to finally start doing things that actually make him happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was like, it's also being able to see your growth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whenever you look at those kind of things, you can either like really miss it and then reminisce in it. Or you can like look at it and be like, I've come so far. You know what I mean? When you look at that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like I thought I was in a really bad place. But... I've worked so hard to get to where I'm at right now. And it it may not seem like it was like a, a physical battle, but it was definitely a mental battle. I know exactly what you mean. Dude, it was a mental battle to get to where you are. And then it's like you just remember yourself like crying. And then next thing you know, you're here doing a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you have a podcast now. You know what I mean? And it's just like these are just the fun little memories you make with friends. But then you never thought that we would get to this point. No. Because at that moment, you're thinking, the world's going to end. <laughs> like, this is... The it. world was ending. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that, I mean, that's... I feel like there's just a lot of pros and cons mm -hmm. of being, like, being in the present, but also, like, making sure to plan for the future. Because you don't want to... You don't want to plan for the future too much because yeah. it's like, if you work too much, <clears throat> like, you're going to... Like I said, you're probably going to, like, miss out on birthdays you're gonna you miss out on your kids growing up you're gonna miss out on like a whole lot of stuff and i wouldn't want to do that like as much as i do want to work and plan for your future yeah i want to grow up with you you know what i mean and it's like that's one of the cons that it that it takes to like be a, a future planner and then i already told you what it was like for what it was like for uh living in the present to where it, to where it's like if you live in the present way too much and you don't think about your future at all it's like you're just setting yourself up for failure. You know what I mean? It's kind of sad. Yeah, it really is. But um, what's an example for you whenever it comes to like, when it comes to like present living? Like, what do you think is a really good representation of that? Like a representation of living in the present? Yeah. Like what's something that you pe people should do to start learning how to like live in the present? Okay. Hmm. I would say, well, 
one of the very obvious ones is less screen time. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's hard for you to actually live your life when you're so focused on other people's lives. You know? Yeah. Like we mentioned in the previous episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's a very obvious mm-hmm. one. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're going to live in the present, <sighs> do your very best at that moment, no matter what it is to be happy. Yeah. You know, because... At the end of the day, there is no promise that tomorrow is going to happen. Yeah. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in a week. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That is you don't know what's going to happen in an hour. So the way that you're feeling, whether it's sad or depressed or FOMO or, you know, anything negative, you have to understand that, like, this is how you're feeling. Okay. But, like, you don't have to feel this way. Yeah. You know, I think it's important to find happiness and peace as much as possible mm-hmm. you know so i think that's i think that's all i really have to say for that yeah, just I'd try to be you. happy try to find peace within yourself and you are your own happiness that's another thing that i want to say it's like you are your own what your own happiness like oh, happiness yeah. comes from you it doesn't come from anyone else it's your job to be happy no one else's job be happy. It's just you and God, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know, that's what I have to say. That's, that's my answer. That's good. that's good, man. Honestly, I feel like, I feel like if you just live in the future way too much, because I felt like, because I feel like there was some instances where my dad was really trying to plan for the future, and... It's like there's no point if you're going to really like future plan without Mm -hmm. having to put work in the present. Yeah, you have to. You know what I mean? It's like you have to do work in the present to be able to get that future. So it was like, it was a whole lot of like, what is it? Kind of like disappointments, like broken promises kind of thing. So it was just like a, you know, if you are going to future plan, like if you really want to start planning for your future, I feel like the one thing you can't think about or like the one thing that you should least think about is yourself like you're when you get to that point where you have to think of a future plan like what's the ideal future for a human being like a wife and kids hmm I don't know I feel like it depends I think it depends because for some people a wife and kids is something that they want for some people they don't want a wife or kids some people don't want children you know um. So I'll just say that it depends. Yeah, it really does depend. But within mine, mm-hmm. it was like my ideal one was like, or what we've been taught. Let's just say that way. Okay. What we've been taught, what like society is like, is like you grow up, you get a husband or wife, yeah, you get the, kids. The like that's just the fence. typical yeah. growing up. Okay, but then yeah. it's like being able for that to like last and prosper. Mm-hmm. It's like there has to be some work and some sacrifice done in there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's like I feel like when it comes to future planning, there's really no use for it if you're not trying to put the work in or not trying to think about, okay, if I'm going to do this, I have to think of everything that matters with it rather than just myself, but my family, my friends that root for me, that I feel like I have no hope in me, but they have hope in me. Yeah. Or like my my future kids you know like stuff like that and it's just i feel like that's a very beneficial part of like thinking about the future because i'm starting to learn that now and it it really is all based within like mentality of what you want (coughs) was that a cough or a sneeze that was a cough you remember like the second episode where like you coughed and i said bless you oh yeah i remember that was so awkward i have loud coughs bro bro i have loud sneezes i have i like i had this bad habit of like every time i sneezed i cursed Oh, really? Yeah, because it hurts. I hate sneezing. Oh, dang. It was super bad. Is it still painful for you? Huh? To sneeze? Oh, yeah, for sure. Jeez. It's only because of my nose hairs, though. I have, like, really long nose hairs, so it's like it just gets caught up in there. You gotta, you gotta trim it. I have a sinus inf- inf- sinus inflammation, from what I've heard. Yeah. I got, like, a CT scan, like, the other day. Oh, wow. And they told me that I had, like, a sinus inflammation in my head, which causes, like, headaches and... Yeah. Is there anything that you can do about that? No, I'm, I'm going to die. 
This is more reason to live. <laughs> 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 oh, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, man. <sighs> but yeah, I think I think this was a good I think this was a really good episode. Yeah, no, I think it was great. Um you know what? You know, I Mary, before we end, I have one question for you. Okay? What's up? Um so we're talking about like present, you know, past, future. Is there anything that you is there anything that you regret doing in the past? Or is there anything that you feel like you missed out on? Any regrets? Well, is there anything that you would have done differently? I'm sure that, you know. I feel like that would, for me personally, for me personally, I feel like that would just be such a long list. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't start trying to make some good decision until now and there's just so many of those but just to put just to put one out there right okay um so my grandma recently just passed away and like well not, not i wouldn't say recent but it was like two years ago i'm guessing mm -hmm. so 2021 and um the thing was you remember how i said when i was I used to be a teenager i really just spent a lot of time just partying yeah. And going out and just hanging out with friends. I would sometimes go off of my grandma in like a really disrespectful way. Like we'd always get mad at each other. Even though like she was just my grandma trying to she was still feeding me regardless. She was still taking care of me. You know? And I feel like one of the things that I would have done differently because I wouldn't I I wouldn't want to use the word regret. You know what I mean? Because it's like everything Within God's plan, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know? Um, but if I were to do anything differently within, like, my time right now, I would definitely wish I could have cherished more time with my grandma. Mm -hmm. Because now the only thing that I really have for with me, like, one thing that I can really remember off with my grandma is whenever she told me this way, way back when, she said... If you ever continue to go through trouble or if you really get to a point of no return and you feel like you're just going to give up. She said this up, uh, this phrase. It was in Tagalog. She said, She says that. What does and that mean? That means uh, call call up above. Hmm. That's what she always said. And basically it's just saying just call God. And even though I didn't get to spend much time with her, it was like those words that she always told me will forever stick to my heart and I'm never going to be able to forget that at all. And I feel like, I just really feel like I wish I could have spent more time with her because being able to like going to her funeral and like seeing everybody and then, you know, like my mom just lost her mom. So it's like, but with she was really with us the majority of our lives so not being there for her when she probably needed it was a really sucky situation and yeah man i mean like before getting super super deep into it i feel like that's what i would want to do differently is just spend more time with my grandma before she passed because mm -hmm. i didn't realize how much of an impact she really made into my life but you know obviously young carl was too busy doing other things rather than caring about <laughs> his family so too busy being the best dancer. <laughs> Too busy trying to party and <laughs> get with people. You know what I mean? <laughs> what about you? Before we add, what about you? Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of it all, do I really regret anything? No, I don't. Not really. Um, everything was meant to happen the way it was. Um, good and bad. Yeah, for sure. I, I would say. You know, I, I won. You know what? When I was uh, when I asked you the question, I had an answer for myself already. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know what? I wish I started investing earlier. Investing like money. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Which I started investing earlier. Yeah, yeah. Which brings us to the sponsor of this podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Robinhood. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Dude, I was about to say, like, did you get a surprise sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, but yeah, no, no, in all seriousness, I guess I wish I would have invested earlier. 
Um, but then again, I don't regret it because my my the knowledge that I have for money and investing and stuff now is way more than what I had previously. Yeah, Granted, yeah. putting money away to the side just in general would have been very beneficial and I could figure out what to do with that money now. <laughs> but, you know, I feel like if I did start investing and that's something that I really want to pass on to my kids. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as like they are as soon as they are just exist, they are investing. Yeah. Like I don't care. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Cuz you'll you'll understand why one day and you'll be so happy and thankful. Would you put your kids name on your uh what is it? What what was that thing where it was like putting your kid's name underneath like your credit card or something so when they get older they already have really good credit? Is that a thing? Is that can you actually do that? Yeah, you could do something like that. Wow. I would. Yeah, you know? I feel like that's something that you would do. Yeah. Just so like as soon as your kids start going out in the world, they already have extremely great credit because you paid your stuff off. Listen, if I have kids, I'm going to make sure that like they're in the best possible situation that they could ever be in. And I'm going to make sure that you know that they're good yeah. mentally, financially, but at the same time, I'm not going to spoil them. You know, yeah, for sure. Even if I could have everything that they could need, I'm going to make sure that they understand that if you want what you want, you have to work for you it. Work I'm for not just going to give it to you. Yeah, big facts. That's um, good. But yeah, I mean, with that being said, this was a very deep podcast. This was a very deep podcast, and which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. My eyes are just to this light. You need to get a curtain. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> have to get a curtain for those who are listening and not watching. I'm, I'm just being bathed by God's the, light. Yeah, God's light. God's light. There you go. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, the the camera. Oh, really? Again? Oh, wow. Yeah. Whoa. Is that the SD card? Um, no, just a recording. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're back. Okay, we are back. But, I mean, we're back so that we can leave. <laughs> yeah. We're back to say bye. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're back to say bye. So, this was a really deep conversation. Um, I just, Like I said, one of the reasons why I really love this podcast so much is because we've learned a lot of things that we just don't know about each other. And we just, we never fail to surprise each other, like, every single time we talk, dude. Bro, you played football, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I know, I, right? that, that's, that's wild. I don't think you understand how wild that is to me. Why? I don't know. But, the honestly... Filipino? No, I just—I <laughs> mean, I just knew that you were very athletic. So you did soccer, you did football, you did lacrosse. You said, "Yeah." What else did you do? Marching band, marching band, dance, dance. That's pretty much it. Like, what else you do? Volleyball, you track. No, can fencing, do volleyball, <laughs> fencing, swimming. <laughs> like, I swam from island to island. Yeah. Oh, it's true. No, yeah. I can't. I can. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we just like I said, I really love this podcast and the way that we talk to each other, and also like little things that people can also know about us and stuff like that, which means a whole lot to us. You know what I mean? So we just want to say like, again, every episode, thank you guys for listening to the podcast. We hope that you enjoyed it today and we hope that you continue to follow our content. Be sure to make sure to like comment and subscribe to our channels and let us know if you guys want us to talk about anything, you know, reach out to us on our email account and reach out to us within our Instagram account, and everything else. All right. Everything else. We love you guys. We love you guys. And if somebody didn't tell you today, we're proud of you. We're proud of you. I'm proud yeah. of you. Go drink some water. <clears throat> oh, wait. I got it this time. <clears throat> All right. Three, two, one. Yeah. All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Richmond. <laughs>